Hello everyone and welcome back to ASP.NET Core 1.0. My name is Steve Bishop and in this video we're going to talk about MVC or Model View Controller. And Model View Controller is a development pattern which is really helpful for this thing called separation of concerns. And that may be a term you've heard in the past, separation of concerns. And essentially, separation of concerns means you want to delegate certain tasks of the application to just specific classes. You don't want to intermingle classes and make one class be responsible for multiple things. In the basics course, we called this the single responsibility principle, and that ties in very closely to the separation of concerns principle. So model view controller is basically where you have a model, which is going to be your data structure, things like your database, uh, perhaps you tie into your database using entity framework, uh, perhaps you tie into some sort of service that presents the data to you, and you might also use a repository pattern. Then you have a view, which is the user interface. And that may be comprised of things like Razor views or HTML, JavaScript, perhaps even WPF or Windows Forms. Now in this course, we'll be using the Razor engine to, uh, to show to our users with some HTML and JavaScript. Uh, but for the most part, views can be any, side of, any type of class or any type of user interface that we want. And that's the beauty of separation of concerns is that you can be agnostic. Each class can be agnostic to what the other classes involved are doing. Now, there is an intermediary class called the controller, and it's the orchestrator. It's what actually handles the, all of the interactions between the model and the view. Now, what typically happens is that a request will come into your application and it will locate a controller that is designed to handle that particular request. Now the controller then goes out and looks for the model that it needs to fulfill that request. Then the model will come back to the controller and the controller will pass that model structure to the view. And it could just simply show the raw model back to the view, but a good practice is to actually use something called a view model. That is, you orchestrate the model into a very particular type of class that you want to pass along to the view that may comprise different pieces of the model that you want to show to your user. Then eventually that view is then sent on as the response object back to the user. Now the great thing about the MVC design pattern is that models, controllers, and views are all completely interchangeable. So if I needed to develop a new view for this particular request, I could do so on the side, and then finally, once it's ready to go, I can simply slip it in place of where the current view is, and no one would be the wiser. It's a very simple process to do. And it doesn't require any sort of special new coding in the controller or model other than to just simply tell the controller, hey, here's the new view that you need to display. And it's one simple, maybe one line of code that needs to be changed as opposed to changing everything about the controller. Conversely, models can come from different locations as well. So perhaps your user is from one company and they have a special database specifically assigned to that particular company. Well, the controller can maybe you know, perhaps make a determination based upon who that user is, which of the different databases that it needs to go out and get. So it's not strictly adhesive to that specific model. It perhaps could go out and find a different model based upon who the user is, or maybe even what view that it needs to display to the user. And the models and the views are also agnostic as to who the controller is, because the model may need to be used in multiple locations. Perhaps the same piece of data could be useful across different types of requests, and perhaps a view might get called from different controllers because perhaps the same pieces of information may need to be displayed, but the request may come in from a different location or from a different user. So the view doesn't necessarily have to know who the controller is. The controller doesn't necessarily have to know who the model or the view is. And the model doesn't have to know who the controller or view is. They're all agnostic to one another and there is good separation of concerns. To get our project ready for 
the MVC pattern, we need to actually create a few folders first. So I'm going to go to the Contoso, app, uh, the Contoso project here. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to click add new folder. And the first folder I'm going to go ahead and name controllers. This is the folder that we're going to place all of our controller classes into. Next, I'm going to go ahead and right click and make another folder. And I'm going to call this one views. And finally, I'm going to go ahead and add one more folder. And I'm going to call this models. So that's all that we're going to do right now for our project. In the next video, we're going to start to build our first page view with a controller and a model to display to our users.